Never sin be merciful. All praise is due to Allah. Bear witness that there is no God but Allah, who came to us in the divine person of Master Far Muhammad and raised up for us the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as his exalted Christ. And I further bear witness and thank Allah for raising the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan out of his mercy and grace as our reminder today. So it's in their names that we can start off the green words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Yes, sir. We, we're going to go ahead and uh, have a family affair today. So I have Zariah Medina, X, and Jabril, soon to be X. And I'm very, very honored to be in your presence because you know the future is all about y'all, not us. Yeah. So um, we're not the Jackson Five, but we want to sing with the teachers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So we have some questions that um, my children want the answers to and these questions are questions that young people want to know so there's a scripture that comes to mind we want to just ask questions that's why i don't even have my bible answer questions ask questions and answer them but it is a scripture that comes to mind where it says that elijah would turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers and uh it's in that spirit that we're going to do this video so i'll put it all in your hands all right yep. Um, first one that I wrote down earlier was what's the definition of true success? The definition of true success. Oh, I love these questions. True success is when you fulfill, I would say, under the teachings and guidance of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan under his, under his spirit. Uh, and true success would be a proper connection to God. True success is when you are becoming who you were put here to be. A lot of things, I don't like to say too much about negatively what we shouldn't be when you're asking what we should be, but a lot of times people judge success wrong. They judge it by finances. They judge it by, you know, money, monetary. True success is when you become what you were put here to be when you are connected properly to the God that gave life to you. Mm -hmm. That's true success. You know, true success is when things make sense in your life. You know, you, 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 you're, you're, you're exercising what you were put here for, where you take whatever blessings that's given to you and you're sharing that blessing and you're able to take different things that you see, your vision, and watch your, your vision unfold. And in doing that, you inspire other people. Because I would have to say lastly, that true success would have to be motivation for other people and not just yourself. If it's things that you just get benefit from, that's I wouldn't call that true success. Mm -hmm. Selfishness can never be true success. You know? So true success would be helping yourself and being an example for others. Mm. Um, uh, so, Sharif asks, is it more effective to improve yourself before improving others? And how do you improve yourself without um, mm -hmm. without affecting or he wrote it wrong. But basically he was saying, um, how can he help someone else without affecting himself in the process. How can he help other people without affecting himself or, or I guess what he's trying to say is without um, harming himself, right? When you're thinking about helping others, it's supposed to be 
a selfless act. You're not supposed to think about yourself. Selfless, not selfish. You know what I mean? So the blessing is 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 more advantageous when you are not thinking about yourself at all. You know what I mean? The minister, the prophet, or the leaders, mm -hmm. you know, the ones who are most successful are the ones who focus on the people the most, the mo you know, the most. But whenever you're trying to save a little for yourself, that's never good. I wanted to know what you think about success. What would you say, you know, true success would be? Uh, well, I know a lot of people think that true success is probably like, like you said, finances, how mm -hmm. much money you have. Mm -hmm. But like me personally, I never wanted to get like to at that point where I'm just like so just worried about money and you you can have like millions of dollars and stuff and then you just you spend it all yourself. Me personally, I never understood that. So I always felt like true success was like a part where you're like in your life where you're like physically wealthy but not like too wealthy but at the same time it's like you're helping out other people like you said it so I always wanted to just have like a good amount of income or like money that I can just give back to a lot of people and help make schools or oh, yeah. buildings and all that that's what I, I want to invest well, that's so beautiful. True success, in my opinion, would just be when you're physically and mentally stable and you can, like, invest and give back to people. Go ahead, you need it. Yeah, so that's like legacy. Yeah, yeah. You know that's what I, mean? what I like to think about. Yeah. Like, what's going to happen when you're gone? Right. And even, like, with a video like this, if we were doing this video just for our own selves, to put ourselves out there, you know, how much do you really get from that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it says in scripture, it's greater, you know, it's better to give than to receive. Mm -hmm. So, you can't go wrong giving with a good spirit. But legacy, man, is so much too greatness because at the same time, like what you were saying, and that's a real heavy, heavy point, that when you think about the people after you, you know what I mean? That's how you can create heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. How many people can really get all this done in one generation? And sometimes things take more than one generation, right? Yeah. That's off the chain. That's that's great. And very, very heavy. Let me ask you a question. Yes, or? Uh, why do you think people are no longer interested in religion? Great question. Because religion, the right religion, will turn you back into what God intended for you to be from the beginning. And that's the perfect uh, physical manifestation of himself, I'm talking about God. Mm -hmm. So it says that God himself would reside with the people. So we would be able to do all that we would want to be able to do. You know what I mean? If we just follow the right God mm -hmm. with the right religion, the same people and I want to hear your take on this too, because it's all about the future. It's all about y'all, not just me. But the same people that uh, down religion, degraded religion, are the same people that promote religion, if you understand what I'm saying. I want to make it a little more clear. It's not religion that they down so much more, uh, so much, they down Islam. And of course, they definitely down the, the, the man that God is using today, the minister. And then they'll promote a religion that uh, is the same religion they promoted during slavery. Mm -hmm. You know, our slave masters called themselves Christians. You know, 1555, it was a, you know, the first slave ship that brought us over here, the good ship, Jesus. Uh, the captain of the ship was Sir John Hawkins, and he was known, if you study and look up his biography, he was known as being a devout Christian. So much so that they were confused by how horrible he treated the slaves. And um, 
they made excuses for, for him and said that maybe he treated the slaves that way because he didn't believe they were human and just start making up all kinds of stuff. But, you know, all our early uh, forefathers in this nation or whatever, you know, the presidents, the fathers of this nation were all Christian. Donald Trump right now is talking about forcing the churches to open up because he, he believes that he's a Christian. You know, of course, you have black Christians that are saying that they're not the type of Christian that these people are. But nevertheless, they promote religion. They just don't promote the religion of our choice, the religion that goes with our nature. Because it would be very, very hard for them to promote Islam and still make money. It's Ramadan right now. And I didn't even give you, you know, the Ramadan Mubarak to you both, you know, the Ramadan Mubarak. <laughs> But they wouldn't be able to make money during the daylight hours. So this is not their the religion of their choice. So it's not like it's not that they down religion so much. They just down the religion that will hurt their pocket the most, or the religion that will stop them from being supreme. You know? How would you answer that, son? Uh, wait, say it again. Sorry, Why do you think people are no longer interested in religion? Um. Well, like, uh, so nowadays it's like, when you think about from the beginning, or it's like, once we came here from the slave ships, like you said, and then when we got off, when we was in Africa, we was always seeing Islam Lakeham and stuff. Our natural way was just for us Islam. So when we came here, and then we were just exposed to this new style of like religion that no one knew about eventually islam died off and then you know Masafar and muhammad came and then brought it back up made it like where islam is in style because back in those times people didn't know about like where they came from or they just thought that our history was only about slavery and stuff mm -hmm. so since we were already exposed to that mindset where it's just like christian 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 white jesus that's how most people think but then when Master Far Muhammad came and all that happened, they kind of brought it back. But then eventually, you know, everything happened. And, and then um, now it's just like people just see like, they probably seen the 90s with Snoop Dogg and Tupac, but people like just end up rapping or being thugged out or whatever and making money off of that. So eventually that just became a style and people just, they, like people nowadays, they want to be religious, but then at the same time, it's like, I feel like they don't have that intention span, but they try to, but it's like, some people are trying to like learn, but just learn in a more faster way. Right. The microwave age. Yeah, <laughs> we don't like to like actually sit well, the down. in 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Like they don't want to put it in the oven, they put it in the microwave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yep. Yeah. I see that. I can definitely see that. On top of the fact that um, it goes against their their whole world and their whole way. I mean, yeah. if somebody's supreme over top of you, the last thing they want is for you to get empowered. Mm -hmm. So you know, during slavery, they wouldn't even allow you to pray. Even if you were praying under Christianity, they didn't allow the slaves to go to their churches because I really believe they know the true nature of us the indigenous people, and um, we're going to find a way to serve God. I mean, even though they took religion away, they took prayer away, the slaves started Negro spirituals. They started singing, and their songs and their gospel became prayers. So yeah. you can't separate prayer or God from, from God's people. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely going to be something that comes back. I just don't... I feel like um, we... Like you say, you can't really separate God and, you know, and black people, his people. It just seems like sometimes it'd be some people who will say that they don't really believe in God or they're not religious. Mm -hmm. I feel like they only say that because growing up and you see a white Jesus with long hair and superpowers, basically, you just can walk on water whenever he wants and then it's like, there's no signs of people being able to do that now. So what's going on? And then like other Muslims, Orthodox Muslims, everything like you might see like, oh, that makes sense. 
Like, I know a lot of Christian people who say, Islam, it makes sense. It's just like, I still can't really get into it. Because they'll see someone like doing Ramadan and then smoke weed one second or mm-hmm. it'll be Muslim people when they actually kill people on the streets and all that. But, and they got the little black mark on their head and all that. So it's just like, you, you still can't get all the way into that, but you understand it. So then that causes people to say, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. So I believe in a God, but like all this religion is fine. Uh, but that's because they don't really know about the nation of Islam, or if they did, it's a quick boom, boom. They don't really get into it. Or older people don't really show them the whole culture of it. Mm-hmm. That's why I believe the punishment is so severe. Because uh, when you misrepresent religion, I mean, you you destroying a whole world's future, a whole generation's future. So that's, that's a major offense. So, yeah, I can see that, you know, you're doing a lot of prayer, but you're not doing a, you, what do you do after the prayer? Mm-hmm. But I know we have a few more questions, but man, these questions are so good. We can just ride out with one question. You know yeah. what I mean? But for the sake of time, we're just going to keep it moving. Um, this is what Nasir said. Mm-hmm. When he was talking about, when we told him about the questions, he said, one thing he did have on his mind about was prophecies that are in the Quran that speak on the future. He said, my granddad always tells me about how things are, how things that were written in the scriptures are coming to life, but I just want to see things from both perspectives. So basically he's saying that he wanted to see the nation of Islam's perspective on like things that are written in scripture. Like, what do we think about that? Okay. Um, interpretation in short that the words that's in the scriptures, and this is Tyrone? This is Nasir. Nasir. Assalamu alaikum, brother Nasir. Brother Devin Barrett, brother. Hope you're watching. But um, it's interpretation. The words are correct. I mean, if you say born again, born again Christian, you take those two concepts. Born again means you no longer do the things you used to do. Like you said, you're not... You know how people misrepresent religion. They do all this prayer, but then they sell drugs. They do all this praying to the point where they even get the mark on their head, but yet they shoot the people that call themselves Muslims as well. So to be born again, whether you're Muslim or Christian, that means to stop doing what you're doing, dying in your old self and being reborn in the new self that's not going to live like that. So that's a term that any religion, that's the right religion, can claim that or embrace that term. Then you have Christian. And Christian is a term that means to be like Christ. But when the Bible, you know, you read the scriptures and it tells you what type of person that Christ was. Christ uh, was a man that said, not my will, but thy will be done. That's in the book of John. I believe it's in five, chapter 5 or 6. We'll have it on the screen. But I didn't come to do my own will, but the will of he that sent me. So Muslim means one who submits yeah, right, his will to completely to do the will of God. And that's right in the Holy Quran. So we'll have that scripture on the bottom of the screen. But um, so we're saying the same things. We're just not committing ourselves to what we say. You know what I mean? So that would be the best way that I can answer it, you know, in the quick in, in the clearest way. You know what I mean? Yeah. The words are fine. I think um, we, another thing is like how he talks about how his grandfather always talks about the scriptures and comparing to now. So it's, I think Nasir is also saying like, is that accurate? Like That's the scriptures, completely, but completely accurate. Completely accurate. Now, his grandfather, of course, is a Christian, right? Um, I'm not sure. He, he, he said it's hard to explain what his grandfather is. Okay, but he's not a Muslim though. Yeah. Right? And he believes in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. Well, Matthew 24, when you read it, you know, and I didn't even think this was going to be a spiritual uh, talk because, I, you know, this whole thing's supposed to be about what young people want to know. Yeah. But I'm just happy to know that young people want to know about a lot. <laughs> what young people want to know about is Christ. So that's a beautiful thing because I'm in my zone when I'm doing that. But if you take me away from what I gave my life to, you know, I'm, I'm kind of drifting, you know what I mean? But I don't like to tell people my opinion, share my opinion with people. I almost never do that. 
I always go right from the scriptures, you know, because I feel like if I was going to just get on, you know, the internet and talk about what I like, yeah. what makes me different from everybody else that's talking about what they like, I don't think people can benefit from what I like. You know what I mean? Mm. So I like to give our people the best that I got. Mm. And the best that I got is not mine, it's God's. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Matthew 24, when you read the whole chapter, it's dealing with wars and rumors of wars. It's dealing with false prophets. It, they, they even tell you how you can understand the right prophet. Mm. I believe that's Matthew 24, verse 27, where it says, like, you know, the Son of Man would come from the east to the west. As light shines from the east, even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. These are scriptures that the right interpretation that comes from the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He explains exactly what that means. That was a parable that Jesus was speaking to keep people from changing scripture. So hopefully one day we can go into how scriptures are changed and taken out and reinterpreted and all of that so that you can't see yourself in scripture like Tyrone's grandfather is doing. Nasir, I'm sorry. Nasir's grandfather uses the Bible the way it's supposed to be used as a navigation system to navigate through this darkness. You know, you're supposed to be able to see yourself in scripture. And if you can, why do you even have it? Mm -hmm. Same thing with the Holy Quran. But no animal or human travels forward looking backwards. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you're looking back at the Bible as if it's a history book, then you can't travel forward successfully like that. You must use the prophetic book that uh, was revealed by prophets that God sent us to move forward and walk into what they prophesied about. You know? Yeah. So I think that's another thing that's it's like just probably to get off of that, but mm -hmm. like in the Bible, I feel like if people actually or or the Quran, if people actually read it and study certain parts of the Bible, mm -hmm. they'll see the connections or if they had like someone who can show them or teach them. But there's actually a lot of stuff that's in the Bible that's like nowadays it's like connected. It's like, wow, that's just like like what's going on now, or there's a lot of different parts on there that if you actually look at it, then you'll see. But someone who probably doesn't read it like that, they'll just be wondering, is, is that in the Bible, or is it like similar to how things are now? You know, see, this is your first time on, and you you just a natural. You're going to have to do a part two, because you're taking me somewhere where I really want us to go into the scriptures, because what more important, what's more important than God's word, really, in, in the proper guidance. But exactly what you're saying is, is right. Would you say our people are wise? I feel like hmm, there's a good amount who actually would surprise you. Is right. what I'm saying. That's beautiful. Like, it's, 10, 10, 15 surprised me. Yeah, I think it's certain people in, um, like, obviously in the music industry, but it's like, that's really all we have that's like we look up to mm -hmm. like obviously like I said we're not really exposed to the nation of Islam so you want to really think to talk about Farrakhan some people don't know who he is right. which is he's crazy been who's been here for it's this intentionally. Long. it's intentionally done definitely but, um, so, but it's still certain people who that's the thing who probably know about Farrakhan mm -hmm. but they're rappers and that's the one that we look, look up to Mm -hmm. Like one thing in Farrakhan always says do for self and then you got Nipsey Hussle who right. was actually trying to do for self. So when he's talking about that, yeah, and that's what we really. see. Yeah, mm -hmm. then that's what we see. So a lot of people want to get on that type of status where it's like, I mean, of course, a lot of people are from the hood. So they want to like, you know, let people know that they are. But at the same time, they don't want to look stupid. Because mm -hmm. being stupid is just being honest is getting out of style. Well, like. Young females want people who can teach them. And even, you don't even have to be the smartest person, but to actually learn from your man, I feel like that's something that females find very attractive. So, of course, there's young men out there who try to like go on the websites and just look up different things. If I'm at the court playing basketball, mm -hmm. I might like 
talk, have a conversation with like one of the thugged out people, people there, and he'd be like, nah, bro, you got the government, they try to do this and that, that's what it really is going, even if it's a little off, that still shows that they want to like, you know, know something, right. have some type of information that they can tell people. So even if it's off a little bit, they still try to learn. It's just they need to be taught by the right people so they can actually have clarity and know what they're saying and can prove it. Right. Well, at least a lot of people that you, you would say don't know, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because if they knew, we wouldn't be in this situation. Yeah. Right? So, you know, when you look at the scriptures, it's almost everything that we're going through right now it's right in the book. So Hosea 4, 6, Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Yeah, I remember you told me about that. Mm-hmm. That's why I say that some of them could have surprised you, but even if they surprise you, it's just about probably one topic that you know about. And so at most they might know something, but they don't know enough. I think the potential yeah, is the part potential. that surprised me the most. You know, and that's the reason since like the minister said, your generation, we can end with a final thought because I'm, I'm basically to the end. We got to stay mindful of the time and, uh, uh, you know, we're going to break our fast too. But the minister said, your generation is the generation that's going to set up the kingdom of heaven on earth. Uh-huh. So if you are the gods that's going to kill the God that's running this wicked world, wouldn't you be under attack? So your generation is under severe surveillance and you know what I mean? And being targeted like no other generation because of your potential. Mm -hmm. So I I just implore you, your friends, you know, shout out to Brother Tyrone and Brother Nasir. Just try to be all you can be and continue to search. You know, like you search and it says, seek and ye shall find. I do believe you will find exactly what you're looking for and be what you can, all you can be. Not in the army, but in God's kingdom. Yeah. Can I ask one more? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's on you. I'm just talking about me. I'm the final thought is going to be with you. You did a video, you closed it out before. All right. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's a lot of young people I know who's, um, of course, a lot of people want to be successful, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. Even if it's like, you know, true success, people just want to like feel stable. They don't want to just be always down in the bottom, you know. So a lot of people say that like you should go to college and that's really the solution to everything. Mm-hmm. But I know a lot of young people who's like really smart, but just not school smart. Mm-hmm. So I know they say that you should go to college, but for the people who like can't go, I was talking to one of my friends and he was saying that you don't really know if you want to go to college and stuff, but like what, is there any other way where you feel like the person can become successful without schools, like being book smart? Well, I don't like to say book smart because that puts the person in a box. And a lot of times people may not think that they're college material and they really are, they just don't have confidence in themselves. But to answer your question, can you be successful without college? You can always go to trade. But one way or the other, you're going to have to go to school. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that you can master something. So that you can use that to make a living. But far as just roaming through life, waiting for something to pop up out of the sky, a lot of people get caught up like that. You know what I mean? You have to commit yourself, discipline yourself. You know what I mean? And do and, and, and do something. Mm-hmm. Plan. You know what I mean? And then stay with it. Be consistent. You know, to the end. And you'll be successful that way. Mm-hmm. But if you're the kind of person that are looking, and that's what a lot of young people are, they make that mistake. Chasing glory too soon. You feel like you can make a move and become rich overnight. No, you got to take the proper steps like everybody else. Mm-hmm. And if you can just go ahead and take the proper steps, that's that's the ingredient to success. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yes, sir. And yes, ma'am, but you know that we say in the nation of Islam, and I hope I don't put you on the spot, but we say in the nation of Islam that uh, no nation rise, rises any higher than its woman. Mm-hmm. So... 
we have my daughter here. I just want to know if you have anything to say as far as what do you think would help our world and what do you think would help young people become what God put them here to be? Um, I think if people are just aware, um, most most um, black people or black children and teenagers are Christian, but they just are unaware exactly what the Bible um, is saying in terms of what's going on right now. And um, if they knew that they could be properly prepared and that they're just aware of um, uh, how, how this world was put together, literally to bring down uh, the black man mainly, mm. and then the, separate the black woman from the black man. Mm. And um, they kind of fall right into it because they're unaware of it. But if they had the knowledge of what was really going on, then they could probably save mm -hmm. themselves. Huh? I said avoid it, yeah. Yeah, and avoid it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's a bomb right there. That's the perfect way to stop. She probably dropped that bomb on purpose because she's hungry. It's <laughs> gonna hurry up and go ahead and get break out fast, right? But well, there ain't nothing else to be said after that, so right, that's it. The only thing we can say is uh you know, inshallah, stay tuned for part two, because we got a lot more to go with this. Yeah, hopefully we try and get more people, mm -hmm. more young people are there, not just me. Oh yeah, I'll be there. but you know, this is good right now because social distancing. So, yeah. you know, as long as they can get those questions here, we'll start off like that. And inshallah, we'll be able to do it the right way. We'll be outside, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum to the, to the viewers and listeners, you know what I mean? And stay tuned for part two.